Football started at Purdue in the late 1880s, and as it did every place in colleges all over the country, it really caught on. It was very, very popular, very, very quickly. And uh, guess who our biggest competitors were? Uh, schools like Notre Dame, of course, Wabash, and Indiana University. That was the, the one, Indiana University. In the fall of uh, 1903, the uh, Purdue-IU football game was being played at Indianapolis, a neutral site. They expected 10,000 people there for the game that Saturday afternoon. Uh, that morning, the newspapers in Lafayette were filled with stories. The whole front page was stories about the football game and how Purdue was going to be victorious. And thousands, thousands of people gathered in downtown Lafayette to see huge train loads of people head down to the game in Indianapolis. There were two trains. Uh, the, in, the, in, the, in the first train, or of course, and in the first car, was the team. And after that, members of the band, and then faculty, students. And, and it was just a huge, huge celebration going on. Tremendous excitement over the football game. The same kind of football Saturdays we have here in West Lafayette uh, today. The train went down to Indianapolis. Uh, the team was getting ready all the way down. They were talking about uh, their, their upcoming victory. And, and uh, it got to a, 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 a yard in Indianapolis. They thought they had the right of way through it. They were going somewhere between 25 to 40 miles an hour. It's much disputed how fast they were going. But however fast they were going, they hit a coal train. The Purdue train, the cars, the passenger cars were wooden. The coal train was all steel. They hit that coal train head on. It, it was the most tragic day in the history of Purdue University. The Purdue University president, Winthrop Stone, was toward the middle of the train. His car never got derailed, but he walked out of his car after getting a huge jolt in, in an accident. And what he saw, we hope that no other Purdue University president will ever have to see. He looked on, uh, around him, and the train cars, the, the front train cars, were all off the tracks. Uh, no one really knows how many students were injured, because people from the community came in those days with horses and carts and threw them on the carts and took them off. It took Winthrop Stone days to find where all his students were, where they were being treated, and, and what had happened to them. Uh, when all was said and done and all was accounted for, 17 people died, most of them football players. Uh, all the people who died were in the first train. But many, many, many more people were injured and ended up in the hospitals in Indianapolis be being treated. The game, of course, was canceled. Uh, the students from both universities went home. The IU students as despondent as, as, the, as the Purdue students. In the meantime, this news got out all over the country, and parents were sending telegrams to President Stone. Uh, it was my child on the train. Is my child alive? They all had the same thing at the end. It said, please answer quick. And Stone did a, a wonderful job finding out where his students were being treated, which ones uh, ha had passed away, and which ones were going to be all right, and getting back to those. Uh, we can only imagine how frantic those parents were. That was the end of the football season uh, for Purdue. Uh, at that time, Purdue was building uh, a gymnasium. Uh, they were raising money to do it. They weren't getting money from the, from the state to do something like that. Uh, they were having to raise the money themselves uh, from, from alumni. It was going very slowly. They decided to make it a memorial gymnasium in honor of the 17 people who died in that accident. Money started coming in very quickly then, and especially since the railroads contributed a substantial amount of money. They were able to very soon thereafter open the memorial gymnasium. Uh, that that was, building was later named uh, for one of our, our, our provosts. Uh, and deans of science, Felix Haas. But it, when it opened, it was the gymnasium and the auditorium where they would gather for commencements. And it was also the gym where our legendary Johnny Wooden played basketball. On the outside of the building, and once you open the front doors leading into the inside of the building, up to the first floor, there are 17 steps. Each of those steps represents one of the people who were killed in the train accident in 1903.